My guest operates in the gift of miracles. At one of his meetings, a paraplegic got healed. But this will amaze you even more. When Brian spoke about this great miracle in another meeting, the healing glory hit a paraplegic in another state, and he was instantly healed. This proves God's miracle glory transcends time and space. Only imagine what will happen to those viewing that need miracles. Next. Welcome, our most important guest, Rocha Kodesh, Holy Spirit. This is your platform. Take over. My guest, Brian Starley, was raised in a broken home. He hated God. When he was a teenager, his mom and stepdad got radically saved and radically delivered. I want to find out how Brian got from being a God hater to a person that is so passionate for God. How'd that happen? Well, it was an amazing uh, moment. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I uh, was not even sure that God existed. Maybe I had the most minute thought that he did. And if he did, I thought because of my circumstances, well, he must not have any care in the world for me. Uh, my mother was inviting me to come to church again and again and again. And one night, she invited me to come not to the normal service, but to a Wednesday night youth meeting. And I jokingly, when I'm teaching, will often say, the Lord might have given her a word of wisdom because she said, you know, Brian, they're having all you can eat pizza and wings. <laughs> and I thought, all right. The secret to your heart. The secret to my heart. <laughs> so I go to uh, the meeting and really hit it off with a couple of the uh, guys there and began going really just to kind of sit back and watch everyone do, and uh, really just kind of mock what was going on. I didn't think it was real. I would say, oh, why do you think they're falling over? Look at them being pushed down. Uh, what's that funny language they're speaking in? Is it even real uh, psychological suggestion? And eventually what happened is I was invited to a youth camp and I go to this youth camp only because one of my friends, after he heard that I turned it down again and again, he said, Brian, you don't understand. There are so many beautiful girls here, more than I've seen anywhere else in the state. I said, you're kidding me, John, at a Christian camp. He said, I'm not kidding. So I go to our youth pastor and I said, uh, Pastor Mark, the Lord's tugging on my heart. I need to go to this camp. I end up at the camp, and just a few nights in, as I'm completely checked out and disinterested, the Lord speaks in an audible voice. And he says, what are you doing? And I look back and think, that was a moment of revelation of you're outside of my destiny for your life. And I tried to shut it down. I, I begged God to stop. I actually ran out of the meeting. And eventually, later that night, after trying to shut it down and suppress it, he spoke one more time audibly when I was in the top bunk of our, our beds in the log cabin. And he said, Brian, you may not be choosing me, but I've chosen you. And I felt something begin to stir and bubble up on the inside of me. I can even feel it now when I'm thinking back on it. It makes me emotional. I sat up in the bed, and it was like floodgates open. I just burst into tears, weeping and trembling. And I just said, Lord Jesus, I, I, this is you. This is real. I've never felt a love like this. And I just give you my life in full surrender. And that was key in that your key. life. Because when he fully surrendered to God, God could use him. When you fully surrender to God, God will use you. Now, Brian and his friend Matt started praying for people on the streets. They went two years, get this, and they saw zero, no healings. What in the world made you continue working on the streets, talking to people, praying for the sick, and nothing? The element of compassion. Uh, we find this again and again and again as Jesus was tapped into the heartbeat of his Father through the Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew's Gospel in particular has this on a number of occasions, and he was moved with compassion. It moved him. It drove him. It wasn't, it wasn't sympathy that was helpless. And I think that's a key component, because every time that I tried to quit, and I threw in the towel, I would go back out to the car, get back home, and say, God, that's it. I quit. <laughs> 
and he would reel me back in with the compassion. And it's only because of that, I think, that I was able to keep going. Well, I see many times when you're just talking, tears come to your eye. Is yeah. that compassion? It is. It's just the compassion of the Lord. Now, very quickly, um, you go to a meeting, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, a fellow by the name of Lonnie Frisbee, who uh, I wish I had met, but I'd never met, uh, uh, prayed for a man by the name of Blaine Cook, who I did meet in an interview, and Blaine prayed for you. The moment he prayed for you, describe what happened. He put one finger on my chest as I had my eyes closed and my hands out like this, and he said something that, that blew me away and, and really shocked me. His prayer was, God, kill him. And I lifted up off the ground. My friend Matt was standing behind me to catch me, and it was like a horse kicked me in the chest. I flew back seven or eight feet, hit the ground earlier in the meeting. Uh, well, well, is that just expressions, or did that really, you really flew back that Re far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or earlier in this meeting, which Randy Clark was speaking at, I was hearing about these different manifestations of the Spirit. And when it got to peace, I was incredibly introverted. I wanted no attention, no eyes on me. I had pleaded with God, don't make me cry, don't make me shake, don't make me, I don't want to do ab workouts, I don't want to do crunches. <laughs> but when he said peace, I said bingo, just peace, no manifestation. <laughs> and he, he whacked me and gave me the exact opposite. It well, was shaking, And fire. then someone walks up to you and says, pray for my son. What happened? It, his son was 12 years old, and uh, he had a very severe muscular skeletal condition that was caused a lot of uh, degeneration in his spine in particular. He had very uh, pronounced scoliosis and a number of other physical uh, conditions. And I really didn't feel any faith because prior to that, we had not seen any fruit. But when we began to pray, suddenly when we were about to finish, he said something that caused a gift of faith to come and fall on me. He said, Dad, my legs are getting hot. I had just learned that heat was a connection to the presence of God and healing. So I began to decree and declare and speak life and wholeness and just reversal of this condition over his body. And the moment we started to shift and pray in declaration and in partnership with what God was doing in the gift of faith, the Lord just completely healed him. We helped him up out of the chair and watched him walk back and forth on the basement of the chair. You know, I am told from uh, his mentor, Randy Clark, he walks in the most extraordinary miracles. And this didn't happen. He went from nothing to miracles because of an impartation. He tells me when he prays, people at home or in a studio audience, not even laying hands on people, they get that same impartation. Are you ready to hear about the paraplegic who got healed in Texas when Brian was speaking in Hawaii? Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, I want to know about the paraplegic in Texas that was healed and the angel that showed up when you were ministering to children. Yeah, both of those were, were so incredible, Sid. Uh, I had just finished up a trip in Brazil, one of our Global Awakening ministry trips, where in this atmosphere of glory that just broke out spontaneously when I was supposed to teach and the Lord said, you're not giving your sermon, I'm giving the sermon. The glory of God fell, and in that glory atmosphere, myself and my translator and a few others prayed for a paraplegic, and it was the first time I've seen that condition healed. He was working in construction seven years ago, fell three stories down, and hit his spine on a steel beam, which severed his spinal cord. Oh. And uh, the Lord just completely restored him, and, and it, uh, I wish I could say more, but it was incredible. Uh, to see that even after that, going just a few days later to minister with YWAM in Kona, Hawaii, I share that testimony on day one. I taught for seven days. On day seven, one of the students looks at her phone, her eyes get big like a deer in headlights, and she looks kind of shocked, like something's wrong. She runs out of the classroom on the phone, and I'm thinking to myself, while continuing to teach, oh, I hope nothing, it's not a family emergency. Well, she comes back in just weeping and telling me that her friend, who is not a believer, he is now, 
that she used to talk to all the time called her testifying of being healed of the exact same condition, injured the same way five or six years ago. And her friend was in Dallas, Texas, while we were speaking there in Kona, and she said, well, when did you get healed? When did this happen? He said, seven days ago. So the moment that that came out of my mouth, just in the power of the testimony, the Holy Spirit, it was, I love this because it wasn't my faith. I didn't know he existed. It couldn't have been his faith. He didn't know I existed. And faith is amazing, but you know, I also think of things like, how much faith did Lazarus have? <laughs> Not too much. And the glory of God just, just, just there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. All right, well, I was ministering to a group of very young kids, probably about 100 or so, last year in uh, Oklahoma City. And as I was, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell after we invited His presence to come and fall upon these kids. And while a lot was happening, weeping, etc., shaking, I stepped over to my left about 15 feet or so. And as I did, all of a sudden, I just felt like I've, I've stepped into something or someone, some being. I, I had the innate sense, this is an angel. And what I saw was as I would go and grab the children and pull them into this space where this angelic being was present, they were all going out under the power of God and intensely travailing. And almost all of them were either having third heaven visitations or direct face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus. It was beautiful. Real quick, you told me that you have had supernatural rain come on you. <laughs> Quickly, yeah. tell me about that. Well, it was actually leading up to ministering to those children and then to seeing many other miracles later that evening during the healing meeting. Uh, I was on my way to minister to the kids, and as I was, I was walking through the convention center, and out of nowhere, this enormous just burst of water splashed into my face. And I we had a parallel conference going on of a lot of businessmen, and I was looking around to see, did someone, were they offended? Did someone throw a water bottle at me? And I looked up, and there, there was no natural explanation. And I was soaked, and as I was going to dry my face off in the bathroom, I heard the Holy Spirit say, unexpected rain. And I think the beginning of that unexpected rain manifested in ministering to those kids. Have you heard from God things that He wants to do right now? Would you look into the camera and speak them? Absolutely. Uh, actually, before this interview even started, when I was back in the green room, I began to feel this burning sensation about right here on the bottom cartilage of my ear. And then I actually felt like either fingers or, or more accurately, pincers were just grabbing a hold of my ear right about here. And so I think someone has been injured either from a faulty piercing where there was an infection or something to do with the pinching of the ear. The Lord right now in your home and it probably as several of you due to the severity of the pain that I felt in my body in this word of knowledge. So Lord, we release healing to this ear condition in the name of Jesus. I also believe strongly right now that someone is being healed of spinal stenosis as well as spinal bifida. And this is not a word of knowledge, but I have a level of faith for this due to how often I've seen the Lord come and heal this condition. I believe God is touching people right now with autism and neurological and mental disorders. In the name of Jesus, Father, we speak healing and wholeness over them right now. Amen. And, and before this show, I heard that God wants to do a major job on teeth. Hmm. Whatever you need in the gum and the teeth area, in the mouth, sores, receive your healing now in Jesus' name. And also, people with wrist problems. Just test it. You even in the studio audience, test your wrist. You see, God is, if you don't test it, if there's nothing wrong. I'm <laughs> testing it if there's something wrong, okay? Uh, and, and also, I'm wondering if there's some bold people that have back or neck aches in the studio audience that would stand and test it. I'm just wondering if you were bold enough that you'd want to get rid of the pain in the neck or back, bend over, or your neck, move, move your head. I want you to test it. Test it. Come on now. You at home. Well, you know, what are you, Swiss cheese? <laughs> you stand up and test your, your back. Bend over. That's how you test it. Move, move your head. Your shoulder, if it might hurt, just raise it. You raise it. 
uh, is there anyone that it has, a manifestation of a healing has occurred? Raise your hand. I've had an issue with my, my neck muscles being so tight that they don't release, and I go to the chiropractor every week and she can't get it to release, or it'll be just temporary. And so I just live in constant pain, and the pain is gone, I can move it. Thank you, Jesus. I had scoliosis from, they think polio, from when I was oh, 10 years old. And um, I'm an identical twin. My twin does not have that, so it, anyway, she's, she does have scoliosis, but it's not from the same cause, and we are identical, and she is, I just found out I've lost four inches from this, and I've had, I had a, a fall and had an injury to my neck and shoulder. The shoulder's better, but the neck is not until just now. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, don't look for the spectacular and miss the supernatural. Mm. Many of you at home that it didn't manifest, go to sleep tonight, you'll wake up totally healed. <laughs> Keep the plug of faith in the socket. Don't pull it out and expect electricity to work. Now, when we come back, Brian is going to impart the same gift that was imparted over him that is, I mean, I could feel the, the kavod, the heaviness of that gift radiating from him, and it'll radiate right through to your TV, right into you, studio audience. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Brian Starley's Glory School, a new four-part audio CD Glory Masterclass exclusively from Sid Roth's School of the Supernatural. This Glory School Masterclass is also available on our digital platforms. So open the door right now and experience more of the presence of God's Spirit in new and different ways as you tap into all the supernatural gifts that God has for you. Yours for a donation of only $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9911. This unique four-part Glory Masterclass mentors and activates you in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Glory Realm. As you learn the critical difference of operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit through the anointing compared to operating in the gifts of the Spirit in the Glory where things are easier and accelerated. Learn the importance of why our supernatural gifts come to us through our natural senses and overlap with our supernatural senses. Learn to embrace inconveniences and turn them into glorious God appointments that invite you into the glory realm. When you get Brian Starley's Glory Masterclass, you will hear Brian's personal stories of spectacular gifts in operation that will train you, equip you, and give you faith and boldness to go out and do it too. Discern the glory atmosphere and experience how hearing God's voice is part of your birthright. Go deeper into God's revelatory gifts like words of wisdom, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and more. See how words of knowledge can come to you in seven different ways and why the interpretation of tongues can be longer or shorter than the word given in tongues. Discover the little known secret that you are not limited to just one supernatural gift, but can operate in every gift of the Spirit. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Brian Starley's Glory School, a new four-part audio CD Glory Masterclass exclusively from Sid Roth's School of the Supernatural. This Glory School Masterclass is also available on our digital platforms. So open the door right now and experience more of the presence of God's Spirit in new and different ways as you tap into all the supernatural gifts that God has for you. Yours for a donation of only $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9911 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9911. We now return to It's Supernatural. Before Brian imparts, freely he's received, freely he's going to give, 
I imagine all the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be activated in certain people when you pray in a moment. Before that, very, very important. You must be holy. God says, be ye holy because I am holy. You can't get holy by yourself. Can't do it. But God sent his son to pay the ultimate price for your sins. And by his blood, you were healed. Repeat this prayer after me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Let today be the start of the best of your life. The best. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe your blood washes away my sins. And I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come live inside of me. Be my Savior and my Lord. Amen. Brian, pray. Yes, Lord, in the name of your holy Son, the Lord Jesus, we invite that raw presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we feel you so intensely in the studio right now. In the name of Jesus, for every person that is watching or listening to this, we release more. We release more. We thank you that there is always more in you, that you're an infinite well. You're an infinite well. So God, let us drink deeper. Let us drink deeper of the well of the river of the Spirit of God. Lord, we pray for more of your fire, more electricity, more of your peace. Lord, that all of the nine gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 would begin to be activated in those who are listening to this. In the name of Jesus, I pray for increase, especially in the working of miracles, the gift of faith, gifts of healings, and the word of knowledge. Lord, those who have never moved in this, let it begin, let it be stirred up. As Paul exhorted Timothy, God, let there be a fanning into flames of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In your name, amen. If you said that prayer, then I want you to be like Brian. He prayed for anyone that crossed his path. And because he said, let every experience, every man be a liar, but God's word is true and the people are going to be healed. And look what God did with him. You're called. Go and flow.